Oh, okay, perfect. What's up? Hi, guys. How are you doing? We're great. How are you? Good, thank you. We'll go ahead and get started. So I'll just introduce myself first. My name is Ava. Um, I'm the peer advisor for CSE, um, and I'm currently a junior majoring in computer science engineering. Um, and today we have Spark eRacing here with us to tell us a little bit about their project team. Um, so do you guys want to go ahead and introduce yourselves? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm Peter. I'm a senior studying mechanical engineering. Um, I'm the project manager for Spark, uh, but I do am involved in the fair amount of CS stuff, so that's why I'm here. And I'm here with Chris. Yeah, I'm a sophomore, but I'm the software lead of the project team. Uh, so I mm -hmm. deal with all of the computer science on the team. Awesome. Okay, that's great. Um, and then just to get started, if you guys want to talk a little about what is Spark um, and kind of like what your main goal is um, with this organization. Yeah, so Spark is a project team through engineering, obviously. Um, our goal is to design, build, and race electric motorcycles. Um, our, you know, our ultimate thing, we don't have a specific sort of uh, like sanctioned event we go to, um, which we love and it gives us the flexibility to sort of go and compete in any kind of motorcycle race we want to be. Um, so that could be anywhere from like dirt bike racing to like land speed records, but we choose to do road racing, uh, and that is sort of really fun because we don't race against, we do race against other college teams. We also race against a lot of privateer teams and some, you know, like professional teams uh, in like real world professional club and professional racing. Um, so the ultimate goal is to build uh, sort of the fastest electric bike we can specifically for racing um, and, and show the world what University of Michigan and what Spark is able to do or sort of exist in a cool spot too because electric motorcycles aren't that you know, like they're on a, it's not really a developed industry or market yet. So we get the luxury of being able to like sort of be on the cutting edge of the entire like industry as it exists. So we, that's why we love it a lot. <clears throat> that's great. That's a great overview. Um, and then if you also want to go into maybe talk about the different teams that you have within Spark um, and kind of what they're called or what they do within those teams. Yeah, so we do a lot of the major like subdivisions just based off like the mm -hmm. discipline of all them. So um, there's a mechanical team, um, there's a software team, and then there's our electrical engineering mm -hmm. uh, and our business team, of course, because we have to pay for mm -hmm. what we're doing. Um, we cannot forget about this. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. But that's like sort of the main subdivisions. And then beyond that, we'll have like um, team leads be below that. So like mm -hmm. busting all those big disciplines up in like the respective subsections in the bike. So for software, for example, mm -hmm. there's like an embedded lead. Um, go ahead. Power, like a powertrain control. Uh, data, yeah. data analytics, display, and then it's the same. Mechanical has a suspension lead and a powertrain lead mm -hmm. more than I can count. For yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of like the hierarchy we run in. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay. That's awesome. There's different teams. Um, and then what kind of skills can people learn through Spark or like what kind of skills have you guys learned from coming in there? So many, so yeah. many skills. Mm -hmm. um, whatever you decide you want to learn. So Peter has learned everything <laughs> about this bike. Uh, he knows it inside and out. Um, but the average member, I would say, learns a very unique set of skills that's unlike anything you learn in school. So, mm -hmm. for example, software, it's so mm -hmm. different than anything you would learn in an EECS class um, mm -hmm. because you're learning how to interface with uh, multiple other companies and how to mm -hmm use their technologies together and it's it's unlike anything especially with it's such an undefined project that it's really fun to like it's almost like real world experience of what how coding is used out of the classroom mm -hmm. yeah and then for right. the other yeah it's it's a whole bunch of like hands-on like learning um stuff that mm -hmm. you see like you it's it's you know it's hard to teach that um, all the all the real world problem solving things, when you actually get a real tangible problem, how are you going to solve this? Um, mm -hmm. That along with a lot of important like life skills, like you know, like pitching yourself to companies, how you get sponsors, mm -hmm. how do you have meetings with real people, um, not just like fake meetings like you have. I personally like the basic skills you'll learn um, as any member on any team is you're going to learn how an EV works. Um, so straight up, that mm -hmm. makes you super super sick asset um, to anyone in in this world knowing you know all the basic systems in ev how they go together how they interact and how they go to make you know a vehicle move um and then beyond that you know basically whatever you want to dive into we don't really like push anyone to do 
specific direction. So whatever you find interesting, you can jump into that and you will pretty much learn all there is to know about that part of the industry, especially with most EV mm -hmm. stuff. So we're on like, you know, the cutting edge of a lot of battery stuff. we really have great ties with the battery lab at the University of Michigan. Um, we're doing custom made uh, battery management systems. So that's like a lot of computer engineering and software engineering on that. And that's mm -hmm. going basically all the way down from, you know, what's currently at hand at the research level, all the way through like mm -hmm. what's been done in industry and what can we do to push it further. Um, so mm -hmm. I've learned an incredible amount. I've gotten hired for a job because of Spark, mm -hmm. um, cause all the stuff you learn, I mean, it's, it's, it's truly incredible. And you, and just the real world, real world experience that you can't get in the classroom, um, in terms of design yeah. and manufacturing is unparalleled. That's great. That, that was a really great answer to what were the skills. And then with that too, do you think you need to have prior experience to join Spark or did you guys have prior experience beforehand or what the typical experience is of people? Right. Chris, no, did, did you have prior experience before joining Spark? I, so I came into Spark last year with absolutely zero mm -hmm. prior experience. <laughs> uh, by the time when I joined, I was starting 280. Um, mm -hmm. And really, it, it doesn't help at all to have prior experience. If you know how to like work your way through the terminal of a computer for on the software side, that's about all mm -hmm. you need to do. Um, and it's mm -hmm. really about you kind of build up your own sense of maturity um, on the team of understanding your boundaries of what problems you can try and solve. And then that's where the learning comes. It's picking your fights and finding out how to solve them, which is very different mm -hmm. than learning school, which is here's a really well-defined spec of what you have to finish and we'll tell you how it's just going to be hard. We, don't really deal with that whatsoever, especially on the software side. And we do emphasize like learning. We understand that, you know, we are a college team. So everyone's working sort of part-time, um, you know, full-time student, part-time engineer on Spark. Uh, mm -hmm. So we are big recruiting classes. They're primarily freshmen or sophomores. Um, we love to have, mm -hmm. you know, seniors join, but that's really, that's really the, the majority is freshmen. So we prioritize learning. Yeah. We know each people what they need to know. We know a lot of nothing or very limited stuff that we do is taught in the classroom. So we have um, pretty much the first like half of the semester for when we when we start uh, a design cycle, we have new candidates, new recruits in. Um, it's just focused on learning. So we have a lot of established curriculum, um, things we call crash courses, which are specific to, um, you know, those sub teams we talked about below those major disciplines. And so you don't need to know anything coming in pretty much. Um, right. mm -hmm. I don't think anyone who runs the team, Chris is now running this entire software team, didn't know anything a year ago. Um, you learn mm -hmm. fast, you learn hard, uh, but we encourage that because, you know, having our members be as well educated and as well, you know, competent as possible is the goal. Um, and we can't yeah. expect industry professionals to step in when they're 18, 19 yeah. years old, so. <laughs> That's great to hear that you guys have like a set um, curriculum, it sounds like, for teaching people and so that's, that's, that's really great to hear. And then um, moving on from that, I kind of want to talk about competitions. Um, you had mentioned that in the beginning that you guys do some um, competitions. So do you want to talk a little bit about what those are like, um, where you guys have traveled to before? Um, and kind of like if everyone goes or I guess like overview of competitions. Yeah, so our competitions um, currently for the bike we've built now, um, we're mm -hmm. basically the ARMA racing series. It's it's the American Historical Motorcycle Racing Association, which is really funny because um, we're nothing historical about what we're doing. But um, they're really supportive of the couple teams and they have a, an electric class. Um, and electric motorcycle racing classes are harder to find in the U.S. than they are in Europe. Uh, so for right now, we're racing with them and they've been super kind to us. Uh, so, so far, we've gone to a race in New Jersey over the summer, that was in June. Uh, that was super fun at New Jersey, uh, New Jersey Motorsports Park. Um, and then we also went to a race in September in South Haven, Michigan at Gingerman Raceway. So uh, they're super fun. We rent an Airbnb for the weekend, usually the Thursdays through Sundays. Um, we, we get there on Thursday and then it's all hands on deck. Like mm -hmm. we're running long days, long hours. Um, <laughs> we take generally around like 15 people to a race um mm -hmm. in the past that's been basically everyone who wanted to come um mm -hmm. we anticipate in the future it's especially with like during during those were like during the summer so we had less people who could actually show up um and then during mm -hmm. the first week of the year so it's like a little more limited people who can be there we're having races sort of next semester we anticipate a lot more people coming 
Um, mm-hmm. So in terms of who goes and who doesn't go, it's more like a seniority thing, who's able to race and this is their last opportunity to, who, who, who has like four more years of opportunities to race. Mm-hmm. Uh, as well as, you know, people who really are critical to making the bike run. Um, it's mm-hmm. not like, so like Chris and I will be there because we built and programmed the bike um, and we, you know, yeah know what's going on when things break because things always break yeah, um, it, it's a very hands-on unique experience of a weekend where every weekend we go we say it's gonna be so fun we're gonna have so much free time <laughs> and then it's 12 o'clock and we're working on the bike in the way yeah. trying to figure out what went wrong mm-hmm. today usually like 6 a.m to midnight days um working on <laughs> the entire day because things always mm-hmm. break inevitably but it's they are some yeah. of my favorite memories yeah. from college they're like so much fun um, mm-hmm. We can plow out sort of with people that we've worked with. We've been on a team before, and you come back as like really good friends because mm-hmm. you've been locked into you know a weekend with them, <laughs> driving sometimes mm-hmm. twelve hours out to New Jersey, um, and it's super yeah. funny. A lot of really interesting people at these races. A lot of usually mm-hmm. like older people with much really cool vintage mm-hmm. bikes, but also some really cool modern bikes. Um, it's more of like a mm-hmm. club series, so it's very relaxed atmosphere, um, and there's mm-hmm. a lot of fun to be had. And I think. I think having the competition aspect of it and being having the ability to go to races, um, and we do races like very frequently. We try to race at like around six times a year. That we have like a good like, work bike um, between like mm-hmm. times a year would be ideal. Um, you know, we race a lot, so we have a lot of opportunities to have to have that fun um, and keep campaigning a bike, which we like um, more compared to like other teams when they only you know unfortunately they only have like one shot a year um, to compete. That sort of you know mm-hmm. makes a so um, that's why we love it. And they're, they're insane. They're really, really fun. <laughs> that's awesome. That was a really good overview of competitions too. They sound like a lot of fun, like stress, but fun. So that's good. Um, and then I wanted to ask, so you had mentioned um, briefly that, you know, Spark has helped you a lot professionally too, where companies have like recruited specifically for you because you're in Spark. So can you talk a little bit about what kind of companies people who are in Spark typically go to work at, um, if there's like different companies or is it more in the same field, um, or I guess your experience as well? There's a whole bunch. Um, we send people all over the place. We have like, obviously we exist in the EV space, so we set, we've sent mm-hmm. quite a few Tesla, um, and then adjacently quite mm-hmm. a few people from SpaceX, um, mm-hmm. like the big, but I mean, all over sort of like the industrial field. Um, I know people who have gone mm-hmm. to Whitney, um, geez, we have a whole like slideshow or whole yeah. like, presentation mm-hmm. slide about this, but mm-hmm. um, a lot of big name companies you know the automotive companies love to see us um we have an we have some new rivian interns we're sending out which is really cool but um oh yeah the ev companies love to see the experience with 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 evs and not only evs but the fact that we sort of have to approach evs differently um we can't supply mm-hmm. a generic ev recipe we're more you know limited on the power density we're, we're a smaller vehicle right we need to have a lot of power mm-hmm. compared to how small we are um, that's just kind of how motorcycles work. Uh, so, mm-hmm. you know, in terms of how the amount of EV stuff we need to cr- like cram into a small mm-hmm. thing, um, it puts us, you know, in a unique experience to where you have a lot of like, you know, like a lot of experience making custom batteries, you know, integrating stuff that's not just off the shelf, but more of a custom mm-hmm. application, which is cool. Um, beyond that, like, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of big name companies, a lot of small name companies. Um, I know mm-hmm. in like, Single one of the interviews that I've done, I've, I've had I've had internships, I've had internships, but like Spark is like the primary thing um, companies want to hear mm-hmm. about. Uh, they love to okay. see that the leadership opportunities. Should you want to be a leader on the team, um, and like just actual tangible work you've done um, that's sort of self motivated. I think companies like to see that as well. Uh, you know, we're doing this for free, and it's a large time commitment, um, and we're mm-hmm. also so it shows really good time management it shows really good drive and ambition um as well and then and professionally we like to do a lot of stuff for like development so um our president leo who is uh he is the uh he's doing the one-year master's program in ross for the master's of management but he he is a, a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering so um he, he's done a lot this semester to really push um, a lot of like the business stuff and a lot of stuff he's learning in terms of like we do uh like a presentation on you know how linkedin, to, yeah, LinkedIn resumes interview all sorts of stuff Job so like finding. yeah it's so, like this semester where it's sort of critical for students um we like to do a bit of those like business developmental things to help mm-hmm. 
you know, make, make Spark more of an asset to the students because they're helping mm -hmm. us out, obviously, um, mm -hmm. build bike. So, you know, we want to, we want to show them the tools so they can get the most out of it themselves. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's great to hear. There's like the professional opportunities as well. You're part of that. So it's awesome. Um, and then with that too, I was going to ask for professional opportunities, but I think you answered that question. Um, I also want to ask maybe about like some social events. Um, do you guys tend to do social things as well? We try. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, <laughs> try to do a bunch of stuff. We social mm -hmm. events are really great for building the team environment. Um, mm -hmm. Everyone's like, when you have friends on the team, you're way more likely to keep showing up. Yeah. We want you to keep right. showing up. So, um, you know, beyond like the usual club things of like parties and like whatever, um, we'll have like movie nights. We'll have, we played like volleyball yeah. instead of, instead of uh, having a general meeting. We just went out in the North mm -hmm. Kent volleyball yeah. court and played volleyball. We recently had a sad to our I am soccer league. Yeah, we have a spark. I am mm -hmm. soccer. Um, <laughs> what else? My spark Minecraft server yeah. um, for those who are <laughs> but we have our own dedicated server for spark um, and, and a bunch of other ways we try to stay connected. We, mm -hmm. we try to do like silly things like tonight's meeting is going to be mm -hmm. um, where each of like the, the team leaders is going to present on another mm -hmm. one. So actually me and Chris yeah. are presenting, <laughs> presenting his information, um, which I'm going to mm -hmm. gather, you know, so it's just, it's just <laughs> be more. Um, more, more enjoyable, like more exciting, yeah, like and a, yeah. better environment, because um, that just makes, we found just makes it so much better, both retention, um, yeah. and like I said, like, we're everyone's part-time, yeah. so keeping people on, yeah. enthusiastic and stuff about that. Right. Yeah. That's great. That's really great to hear. Um, and then moving on from those, that side, I kind of want to talk a little bit about how specifically CSE people can get involved. So I know you mentioned um, Chris, you're the software lead. So if you want to talk a little bit about maybe um, how people can get involved in the software team, if they're maybe new coming in. So yeah, really, the, mm -hmm. all, the, all you have to do is get in touch with us. Um, mm -hmm. Our Instagram, email, website, mm -hmm. which will just lead you to our email. Um, mm -hmm. If you get in touch, uh, there's no like, vetting interview application mm -hmm. process. Uh, you just have to start showing up and you're on the team. That's as much as it takes. Mm -hmm. um, because really, it's not being on our team that matters. It's like caring enough to dive in and learn what you're doing. Um, mm -hmm. What's gonna make, make you feel like you're actually a part of the team. Um, right. uh, you're not gonna know what you're doing and you're not gonna really meet other people outside of your team and it will just feel mm -hmm. like a job and a chore um but if you show mm -hmm. up to our meetings uh you'll be welcomed in um mm -hmm. on the first day mm -hmm. uh so that's as much as it takes just wanting to do it with that too i know you, previously you had mentioned um there's different like sub teams in the software team how yes. are people placed into those is there like specific ones people have to go into or is it just off of interest it's more of like what you're interested interest, in pretty yeah. much mm -hmm. I mean, don't we'll want to like box people in those certain teams yeah. even um, if yes you decide you want to do mechanical engineering or fine. electrical <laughs> engineering mm -hmm. totally fine. yeah it's really we're mm -hmm. just looking for people who are enthusiastic about what they're doing and mm -hmm. that's 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 it because yeah. that's what really matters on our team. so like if they have that's a certain, certain like skill set um that they might be better at we might encourage them mm -hmm. to go one yeah. direction or another you know if they have right like rigorous C++ experience, you might throw them on a certain <laughs> part of the team. Um, mm -hmm. But it really is up to them. I think a lot of people actually come in as undec undecided and then mm -hmm. bounce around mm -hmm. between a lot of the sub teams or like the disciplines mm -hmm. and, and figure out, oh, I like this part of engineering the best. Um, and then mm -hmm. each, of our, each of our leads like Chris are like sort of advertising their, their time to engineering and then kind of mm -hmm. getting, but yeah it's it's what do they want to explore what do they feel interested in um is what they can do and then if they don't want to do that they can bump around and, and choose what they want to do so that's great that's awesome um and then with it too i wanted to ask um kind of how the time commitment has been um for you guys or how you guys balance classes with it i know you mentioned too that a skill that you guys have learned has been time management so how has that been i guess balancing that with classes i'd say for for us, or for me, um, the beginning of this semester, this was the first semester that I was an admin on the team. It, mm -hmm. was, a, it was a real shock at the beginning of the semester mm -hmm. how much time this team was going to take. Um, mm -hmm. 
because I didn't realize how much logistical work goes into running a team right. this big. Um, but now that my feet are under me, it really just feels like it's a part of my life and it doesn't mm -hmm. feel like a time commitment anymore as much mm -hmm. as a thing I do like going to any other class. Um, mm -hmm. So I would say it's an hour or two a day on average. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. but if you're good with time, like yeah. it doesn't, it doesn't I mean, interfere. It'll, with it'll vary too. Yeah. So like, I mean, right. for us, we're running a team with like a hundred engineers on it. There's, there is like Chris said, a lot of logistical work that mm -hmm. has to go into that. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you're just like a member, um, you know, that mm -hmm. we, I say, I don't care if you put in one hour or if you put in a hundred hours per week, um, we're happy to have mm -hmm. you help as long as you're consistently yeah. up and you're enthusiastic about your work. Mm -hmm. Um, we don't want to, you to get in the way of your classes, like flunk out of your classes. Um, I choose to flunk yeah. out of my because I run the team of it. Um, <laughs> not going to make you do the same. Um, that's not mm -hmm. so much. But, um, <laughs> you know, like Chris said, I think we like to sell or like to have people buy into the dream. Um, mm -hmm. What we do is really, really sick, really cool. It's an amazing mm -hmm. opportunity for people to do this in college, mm -hmm. um, especially to like not have to like interview for it or pay for it or have really any negative consequences mm -hmm. get to do mm -hmm. like what we're passionate about so um if we can get people to buy into that then then the time commitment just becomes like oh it's like another class i'm taking or it's like my yeah. hobby um spark yeah. is definitely yeah. more, more of a hobby like than a hobby yeah, um, right. yeah and and for like you know if you're holding a leadership position um we'll like you know like the the serious system right. will step up so from like a member mm -hmm. to like a team like this can lead to like you know the, the top of the thing um we'll stress during like elections say like this is you know this is a more serious time commitment and there's definitely the people that are just so happy to take that on and there's certain people that mm -hmm. you know with you know where they are in terms of how much time they're spending um in spark and out, outside of spark and so i think that affords people a lot of different ways to be involved without being forced to do too much mm -hmm. um definitely didn't want to become the type of team that's going to be yeah. to hit like crazy timelines or crazy quotas and like becoming mm -hmm. your entire life unless you mm -hmm. want it. so that's it right that's that's really good that the manage the time management is there as well so for can i ask really quickly um for software team though is there like a a weekly meeting or something like that i guess like a general commitment for general members so the, the general commitment is that on sundays from one to three um you'll be up at the Wilson Center or around the Wilson mm -hmm. Center. Um, although that does still, even even that, which is our software meeting, varies. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes smaller groups won't be able to make mm -hmm. thing or will have a better time. So they'll, right. as much, it's really, we can work around anyone's schedule. Um, and then mm -hmm. same Tuesday nights, we have our general meetings. Um, mm -hmm. And those you can't really work around, but if right. you get a couple, mm -hmm. no one, we're not taking attendance. It's just right. whether you want to go or not. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That's great. That's great to hear. Um, and then I guess my last question I wanted to ask was for both of you, what's been your favorite part of Spark then? Oh, Chris, what's your yeah. <laughs> I think my favorite part I think my favorite thing we've done on Spark was our first race. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Felt like all the hard work that I had watched other people put in last semester <laughs> paid off. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But now, like out of the things I've actually done, I think seeing the team come together this, this year and this semester has mm -hmm. been the most rewarding aspect of it. Of It feels like people are now buying into what we grew to love over the summer mm -hmm. uh, which... absolutely yeah in terms of like specific events i have to agree that first mm -hmm. race was really fun um we mm -hmm. hadn't used a bike in a long time because of like covid mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah. um so it had been in three years i think and since raced. um so like no one on the team had ever raced before um mm -hmm. so it was, like, and we had been working for a really long time on our on that that bike atlas yeah. um to get it done so mm -hmm. fun mm -hmm. being out getting it, seeing it on the track, seeing it work. We finished it like weeks, a week before you left. Mm -hmm. um, just <laughs> fighting to get it done. Um, and then being there and having mostly um, was really mm -hmm. fun. Sort of being on a vacation. It was like summer with like a bunch of our friends, yeah. um, getting close yeah. 
everybody. We were like, you know, and we were in a completely different state. So that was really, that was really fun. Um, but like team, yeah, like, like Chris said, um, I've been, I've been on the team since 2019. So, well, mm-hmm. yeah. so it's been a long time. And I've been running the team for like mm-hmm. two and a half years. Uh, so seeing sort of like the regrowth post COVID sort of getting the team back on its feet and being something more than it ever was before. Um, and mm-hmm. all those things we put into fruition, you know, like a year ago, finally coming in and, and being impactful to have us build our, have us grow our team, like double, triple the size of it and be way more effective. And we're taking on projects that are way more ambitious than we ever thought we'd mm-hmm. ever take on. And we're getting companies sponsoring us that are bigger than we ever thought would be. Um, so, you know, coming into like a little rinky dink team, um, Leo and I always have to say mm-hmm. we joined, did join when there was like 15 people on the team and now, mm-hmm. um, or a force to be reckoned with, um, you know, both yeah. just university and also sort of in, in the world, which we would really like to see. Yeah. So it's yeah. fun it's fun to be on it. Yeah, that was a great answer. Um, those are all my questions here. So I really appreciate you guys um, joining us today to answer everything. Um, I personally want to join Spark now. Um, I think it sounds amazing. So that's really awesome. Um, but like I said, thank you so much. And we'll have this recording um, posted later so people can come watch um, again and hear all your amazing answers. So thank you so much. Have a good rest of your day. Sounds good. Thank you. Bye. Bye.